Have you heard of Snowpark? Does it sound like Apache Spark? Is it a framework like Apache Spark or simply a library or just a utility? Well, let me tell you, the team behind the name has done an incredible job. At first glance, Snowpark seems like a true replacement for Apache Spark framework. But as we will discuss in this video, the truth is a bit more complicated than that. We will deep dive into the world of Snowpark, exploring its unique building block and computational approach. You might be surprised at how different it is from Python's Panda library and Apache Spark in-memory computation framework. So get ready to discover the truth about Snowpark and how it compares to these other technologies. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this everything about Snowpark playlist for true data professionals and data engineers like you. The purpose of this playlist is to raise awareness among the data developer community about Snowpark and answer a series of questions. Many data engineers, SQL engineers and Snowflake developers believe that Snowpark is simply a Spark running on a Snowflake cloud platform. However, others have a different view and understanding of Snowpark. The goal of this playlist is to provide complete clarity on what Snowpark is and what it is not. We will explain how different technical professionals can use Snowpark to build data solutions and address any confusion surrounding its capabilities. So join me on this journey to gain a deeper understanding of Snowpark. So let's see what is there in this entire playlist. I could have made a one hour video answering all the questions listed here in this tree map. But since some of you may already know the answer to certain questions, I decided to create a playlist instead. This way, you can choose to watch the specific questions that interest you, giving you more flexibility. You can pause the video, review the topic and jump to the specific episode if that interests you. Links for all the video can be found in the description section or above in the info icon. In this episode, we will answer the question, what is Snowpark? I am sure you are eagerly waiting the answer. But before we get started, I would like to give you a preview of other questions we will discuss in the subsequent episodes, which are also related to Snowpark. And if you would like to become an expert on this topic, you must know the answer of these questions. If you have already gone through these questions and wish to skip ahead, you can jump to this specific timestamp and start the next section. Just because you know what is Snowpark does not mean that you can answer what is not Snowpark and that's what we will discuss in episode 2, a very interesting episode. Episode 3 will help you understand who should learn about Snowpark and whether it is relevant for professionals such as data developer, data engineer, SQL developer or data integration engineers. Episode 4 will provide guidance on where to learn about Snowpark and the resources that are available. You can find resources in this channel or refer to the Snowflake official guide to learn more about Snowpark. Episode 5 will discuss about if a SQL developer can learn Snowpark and if so, what is required for a SQL developer to learn Snowpark. This will be an interesting topic as many SQL developer lacks programming skill and this chapter will provide them a complete roadmap. Episode 6 will help you understand the supporting programming languages to build Snowpark application. Episode 7 will explore if Snowpark can be written inside a Databricks notebook or not. Episode 8 will focus if a Snowpark program can be executed within Snowflake and if so, how. Episode 9 will discuss the future of Apache Spark in-memory computational framework in the context and the presence of Snowpark. Episode 10 will briefly talk about Snowpark versus Azure Data Factory, Databricks, Synapse Analytics and their future. Episode 11 will primarily focus on migration path from Apache Spark to Snowpark. Episode 12 will deep dive should you or your team write Snowpark in Python or Scala or Java and which one is better and more preferred for your team. So before we go further, I have a quick announcement. I have published more than 100 videos under different playlists in my channel covering different concepts. And sometimes it is hard for some people to find the specific concept or a subtopic. 
So to help my channel followers, I have created this one or a two pager cheat sheet that provide a quick summary on each of this topic as well as subtopic and link to the part of the video directly to save your time. You can also download Snowpark Python cheat sheet and many other Snowflake concept. Download instructions can be found in the description section below or feel free to drop me a note in my Instagram account. Let's start. Before we talk about Snowflake's Snowpark, let's go back in history and understand where Python's Panda library and Apache Spark data frame coming from. The Python Panda library was created by Wes in 2008 while he was working at AQR Capital Management. The library was initially developed to address the limitations of the existing tools for data analysis in Python. Pandas has since become one of the most widely used data manipulation libraries in Python ecosystem. In Pandas, a data frame is a two-dimensional data structure with labeled axes, rows and column. It can be thought of as a spreadsheet or SQL table where each column can have a different data type like integer, floating point number, string, etc. Data frames are commonly used for data manipulation, data analysis and data visualization tasks. So Pandas is a library and needs pip installation before it can be imported and used for data manipulation in your Python program. And this is how Pandas data frame operation looks like. Moving forward, in 2012, Apache Spark or commonly known as Spark added PySpark, the Python API for Apache Spark in version 0.7.0. PySpark allows developer and data scientists to write Spark application using Python programming language which is a popular programming language for data analysis and machine learning task. In 2015, Spark 1.3 introduced DataFrame API, a higher level API for working with structured and semi-structured data at scale. PySpark's DataFrame API mimics the pandas to a large extent, although there are some differences and limitations. Like pandas, PySpark's DataFrame API provides two-dimensional tabular data structure PySpark data frame also support many of the same operations as pandas such as filtering, grouping, aggregating, merging data as well as more complex operations like pivoting and window functions. However, there are some differences. One major difference is that PySpark data frames are distributed across multiple machines in a cluster while pandas data frame are stored in memory on a single machine. And this is how PySpark data frame operation looks like. Overall, PySpark's data frame API provides a similar programming experience to Pandas to attract the Python data analyst and lower the entry barrier to make this technology more and more popular. Snowpark was introduced by Snowflake in sometime 2020 by following their private preview followed by public preview and then GA release approach. Snowpark is constantly evolving and Snowflake is trying hard for its adoption by Spark developers. If you look at the Snowpark data frame programming construct, it looks very similar to Pandas or Spark. And before we go deeper, let's talk about this technology's code base statistics. So it is very clear that Pandas is a library with 27k commits and 8000 files with 1.5 million line of code. On the other side, Apache Spark, which is in-memory computational framework has close to 8,000 commits, 18,000 files and 2.7 million line of code. It is a complete framework for in-memory computation with a lot of libraries, utilities inside it. On the other hand, Snowpark code base looks much more smaller compared to these two technology stacks. If you are interested to explore more about Snowpark code base, then check their GitHub page and check the statistics and what they have written to build a Snowpark for Python, Java and Scala. So we have covered the history of Pandas and Apache Spark framework and the question is still not answered. Snowpark is a framework or an API. If you go to Snowflake's official documentation, it says Snowpark API and Snowpark library and the API can be written using three programming languages Java, Python and Scala. 
Unlike Apache Spark, which is in-memory computation framework, Snowpark is not a framework and it is an application programming interface, so-called API, that mimics Pandas or Spark data frame approach and allows data analysts to interact with the Snowflake data warehouse. So next question you may ask, if it allows us to interact with Snowflake using data frame API, how it is different from Pandas or Spark framework? If you are using Pandas data frame, all the data manipulation happens in your local machine and local machine memory is your limit. So read function will read data and get the data frame and then the data frame library can be used to manipulate data in memory. So if you have 1 GB RAM and if you want to load data more than 5 GB or any of your data manipulation operation generating data more than your local machine RAM, it will go or may go out of memory. To avoid this, Spark allows you to run the data reading and data manipulation with a large data set using big data cluster. Here you can also use the read API or a library to read the large data set, create data frames like a pandas data frame and perform manipulation and produce result. If you have more data or a large data set, Spark be it PySpark or Scala Spark allows you to use more and more compute node from the cluster and complete the computation job. Your local machine is just a driver machine and all the computation heavy work happens in your cluster. This way you can avoid out of memory error and get your data manipulation job done. It is not that Spark does not end with out of memory error. It happens and it can also be fixed either by adding more capacity to the cluster or by tuning your Spark program. However, the data frame API on surface looks exactly same. So the data engineers and analysts does not have to worry when they are building their programming construct. And in the same line, Snowpark is also developed. And when you use data frame API in Snowflake library, it simply translate those data frame API calls into SQL calls and execute the query in your Snowflake environment using a virtual warehouse. Unlike Apache Spark, where your data frame is converted into dataset API and then dataset API uses RDD to run the MapReduce program under the hood, Snowpark is an abstraction layer that converts your programming construct to Snowflake compatible SQL and then run those SQL lazily in your Snowflake virtual warehouses. Let me show you with a simple Snowpark program and if you are familiar with Pandas or PySpark data frame programming construct, it will look very similar and simple to you. Here I am using VS Code terminal and I have Python 3.8.16. I am using pip3 to install a Snowflake a Snowpark Python package. As you see, it is downloading. So I will quickly fast forward this installation process. Yes. Snowflake a Snowpark Python 1.3.0 and all other dependencies. So my installation is done successfully. Let's quickly understand how the data looks like in our internal stage location. And here I have some sample customer CSV file. So this is data dump CSV data underscore zero underscore zero underscore zero dot CSV. So these are my CSV file. Let's see how the customer data actually looks like in a tabular format. It's a quite a lot of data. That's why it is taking a lot of time to, from the table. So the customer has a column called salutation, first name, last name. It has a date of birth, birth country and email address. So there are total six column in this table same customer data is available in CSV format in this internal location. So I am using uh, Python 3.8.16 in my local machine. And this is a simple hello world Snowpark Python program. Explaining the Snowpark program is not a scope of this video. However, the piece of code written in this program is pretty simple. From line number 9 to line number 16, it is a connection parameter as a dictionary. Then I am passing this connection parameter to this session object, creating a session variable. And through this get current database, get current warehouse database and schema, I am printing what is the value. And then I am creating a customer schema. And here I am passing this customer schema, reading a file from my internal stage. This read API from my Snowpark library 
returns a customer DF, which is nothing but a data frame. And on this data frame, I am applying order by clause on a two different column, birth country and salutation. And then I am actually creating a filtered country DF. I am trying to fetch all the country where country value is Brazil. Then I am applying a group by on the salutation and doing a count. And finally, I am again applying a order by and then I am running this collect method on the result DF. So you can pause the video and try to understand how this program looks like. Now, let me run this program for you. Before I run my snowpark program, let's go back to the query history and see where the query history stands. So under the activity tab, I have query history and I see show table was my last execution by this demo user. Now I'm going to run the snowpark program using this demo user and let's see how the query history looks like. So this is the command which I'm going to run it and I will maximize the screen. So it has printed the basic output. And now the result is displayed, which shows total six salutation and the count with respect to each salutation for country Brazil. So if you look into the program, it is reading the data from this internal stage location, applying the order by for country and the salutation, applying a filter criteria, performing a group by operation, again applying order by and renaming operation. Let's go back to query history. After the show table, it is creating a file format and dropping a file format because we are reading the data from internal stage location. And if you see those multiple data frame operation has been converted into a single SQL statement. And let me click on this. When you come to the query detail, you can see that set of data frames are converted into a single SQL statement. And this is how this SQL statement looks like. If you look into this highlighted part, it is using dollar notation and reading the file from the internal file stage. It has created a temporary file format and that file format we have seen in the query history. It actually executed this query using the file format and finally it has dropped the file format. What does it mean that the Snowpark program should also have rights to create a file format and there could be many other things which it may need which we haven't explored yet. Now once it fetched the data, it actually runs the group by command and then here on the top of the query, it renames the column. So this is how this entire set of data frame is converted into this query and the translation of data frame into a SQL is done by a Snowpark library and once it is converted into appropriate SQL, the SQL is executed via API call. If I come to query profile, this is how the query profile looks like. So it has a scan on the internal stages. Finally, it runs a filter, sort, aggregate, again sorting, result. So this part is pretty common because finally it is representing the SQL which is being executed in a Snowflake environment. If you look into this client driver, this client driver is nothing but Snowpark and let me remove some of the columns. Now this is more clear to us. Now I have Snowpark 1.3.0 driver which is actually executing this query and here it has used the virtual warehouse. So now let me summarize what we have just seen. All the Python code written here using Snowpark data frame API is lazily evaluated using Snowpark library, converted that programming construct into equivalent SQL compatible SQL statement and used the Snowflake virtual warehouse compute and completed the job for you. This happens only when you invoke an action from the data frame API. If you remove or comment the action part, which is the line number 58, nothing happens in the Snowflake and you would not be able to see query history. You can try that out and put your comment in the comment box. So this simple is a Snowpark architecture and it is way different from the Apache Spark architecture where you have to do a lot more complex arrangement to run a very large workload. So you have to put the entire life cycle of a Snowpark program it can be explained in following bullet points. Scan the Python file having a Snowpark code. While running the program, it look for the data frame action. In this case, line number 58, where the collect operation is being called. Using the action method, it builds the SQL 
from all the transformation operation which we call attack in apache spark way once it builds the sql statement it issues the api calls to the snowflake instance and execute the query and fetch all the result as a part of action now you have an answer for what is snowpark in snowflake in simple term it is a translator library that translate your programming construct be it python java or scala into sql statement and run them in snowflake virtual warehouse using api calls and assume with my explanation you got enough clarity and can answer what is snowpark and how different it is from python's pandas library as well as apache spark in memory computation framework now we know that what is snowpark and understood at very high level and you can safely assume that what it is not but i can guarantee that the next chapter will give you lot more insight about what it is not especially when you think that your apache spark code can be migrated easily into snowpark so continue watching all the episode from this playlist and especially episode 2 thank you for watching episode 1 if you have learned something valuable from this episode don't forget to press the like button and share with other data engineers and snowflake developers happy learning and keep growing